Add it up. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Samkara. I'm 19 years old and um, I'm going to college doing business. It's been around almost three years that I've been here. My name is Neha. Um, I've been in the U.S. for the last 13 years. I work as a grants manager at a nonprofit that does racial and economic justice. Um, I'd like to think of myself as a storyteller organizer and a student of history and international politics. Hi, I'm Asa Shrestha, aka Asa Zyla, and I'm a musician, artist, and I live in Boston, Massachusetts, and I've been in America for about 13 plus years. So when I was in Nepal, we still had load shedding. <laughs> so I was like, no more load shedding, internet all the time. Overall, I was really excited because you know, you hear about America all the time. Mm. I was like, junk food, Taco Bell, McDonald's, <laughs> yes. like, let's go, you know? Oh, the other thing that really hit me was when like traffic, all the cars are in the same speed. Mm. That felt magical to me because in Nepal, it's like haywire. So mm. uh, I, overall, I was excited and I was excited to like, live like the American high school life because mm. movies so movies. yeah it's fun um I was nervous as can we say that word I'm sorry yeah. I was nervous <laughs> as <laughs> I was nervous because it was my first time on a plane ever and oh. it was two days you know 74 hours or 42 hours yeah. flight not direct but it was just first time on a plane and here I was traveling alone um one thing that really shocked me was I always imagined America to be like tall buildings because thanks to friends, Central Park, right, Rachel Ross, all that. And then there I was, middle of North Carolina, kun gauma ko like this is not my America. So there was that, what the fuck? Like where am I? Is this like what did I sign up for? Honestly, um, yeah, I feel you because. So when I came here first, I did land in Boston. So I was like, mm. oh wow, tall buildings. But then my dad lived in Nantucket. So like I had to go to Nantucket. Nantucket mm. is pretty as well. Like I love it, but it's only in summer, not mm. forever. So when I went there, there's no building. There is, there's just one thing called stop and shop and that's it. <laughs> you go to shop and a stop and shop. And really, I was like, oh, you know what the gamma? I, I don't know, is this America? That's what, That's why I was like, you know, not so much uh, in the long run, mm -hmm. like excited, but yeah, I feel you. Yeah. They don't show that side of America on TV yeah, until right? you get here. Right? Yeah. There's but. a lot of sides they don't show, so, mm -hmm. but here we are. So I came right into high school. A little bit of middle school, went back to Nepal, but let's start high school. I was the kid in high school in America, like walking down the hallway saying, good morning, sir, <laughs> good morning, ma'am. Cause you know, in Nepal, they're like, you have to. And so everybody thought I was this crazy girl, like trying to be good. <laughs> and then the other culture shock was when in Nepal, when the teacher walks into the room, you get up mm -hmm. and you like, you know, greet. But here, like nobody cared. Um, so I think that was one of the biggest culture shocks. Cause when I first came, I was, 13 something mm. so there's not much to experience except for school so mm. the biggest culture shock for me came in high school yeah. I feel like sometimes people and people made fun of me like the students yeah. made fun of me because you know I was like sir can I please like ma'am <laughs> who says ma'am in high school oh uh, they should have prepared us for that <laughs> yeah 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 and the thing sorry you have to be cool in high school like mm. if you're not cool you don't you don't exist no, not you're, not, you're not you're not visible exist. exactly like, life was hard, <laughs> but yeah, I made, I made it. You made it. I'm a cool kid now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like it's a culture shock, as in like food culture shock. Like I think my first trip after we landed North Carolina was Walmart. Eh? And in Walmart, my dad, I saw some label, okay? And all the apples and everything looked so big. I think it was my first time actually seeing non-organic fruit yeah. and then the things had labeled where I come from like the fruits it's not like I picked up from the tree and ate it or this to label shiny say I hadn't experienced it so I was like what is wrong with this food like why does it look why do, does the, everything look so big and he, so I was like oh, food on food steroids shop. yeah, yeah exactly steroids. Yeah. well for me I think it was high school definitely mm. So in Nepal, there's a thing when you are new to the school, everybody's like, oh my god, there's a new kid, mm. like, let's welcome her or him, like, maybe she, you know, like, you're new, like, mm. everybody's like, oh, where are you from? They try to talk to you, make you feel like home. Mm. But when I came there, when I went to the walks, my first walk <laughs> to my high school, I was like, okay, 
um, do they not know you? Like, am I, am I, am I in the yeah. place? Like, no am I cares. going in the right direction? I was so heartbroken. Seriously, I was like, why is nobody talking to me? Like, somebody tell me where my class is. Like, that was one of the most culture shock for me. Can I add that yeah. I actually liked it? Yeah. Like, in mm-hmm. Nepal, people care too much about other people. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone's trying to know what you're doing, where you are, where you're going, who you're hanging out with. Yeah. But, like, when I came to America, I felt this freedom. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, I can go wherever I want, do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. No one's going to be on my ass about it. Can I say that? No one's going to be on my back about it. about mm-hmm. that? So, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that in a yeah. positive light. <laughs> Value absolutely because I wasn't used to speaking in English. I thought I knew English because TOEFL, SATs, all that, right? We studied in English, but that was not what I used to communicate daily. So I thought I was prepared, and then I'm in the middle of southern south south where even English doesn't or didn't sound like English back then to me. And I think it affected me in a really horrible way. You know, class participation matters a lot in U.S. colleges. So even when I knew the answers, I didn't feel confident enough to raise my hand or speak. And professors were obviously, you know, assuming that it was because I hadn't prepared or I wasn't smart enough. So that really affected me. Yeah. I definitely feel that, like, I really used to get insecure about how I'm speaking. Like, I'm gonna talk to people when I'm like, mm. like, am I saying the right word? Am I pronouncing it right? So that one thing I can really feel, because of course I knew English, but not like this. Not like how people speak in here. Mm. So it was really tough at the beginning, because, you know, am I speaking it right? Is my accent okay? Like, mm. am I doing this right? Am I talking to people okay? But then, so when I came here, I started working. So that's when I actually learned how to speak in English. Because I used to hear people say some word and I used to be like, wait, this is how you say this. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, kind of like imitating, mm-hmm. but then that's how I learned English. Mm-hmm. I don't feel that anymore. Like mm-hmm. maybe sometimes, but I'm like, you know what, this is how we speak. Even if I have an accent, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, in Nepal, they teach you British English. So you spell yeah. things differently or, or it's very formal. You speak mm-hmm. like a book. I went to high school in Maryland. <laughs> you know, like from the I'm from the DMV. So, my first couple of weeks in high school after coming from Nepal, I I understood the English. It's not that I didn't understand. I was just like, why why didn't they prepare me for this? Mm. Cuz you know, in, in Nepal, they teach you like, okay, if you, if you don't understand somebody, you say, pardon me, <laughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry, can you repeat that? But in high school, they're like, say what? <laughs> I was like, excuse me? <laughs> you know, so things like that. And then um, I spelled everything like the British English way. So even though I my English was pretty good coming to America, they put me in ESL mm. to learn American okay. English. Mm. So yeah, for anybody out there in Nepal, like if you're, you know, trying to come to America, you wonder what it's like, like, learn American English. Like, mm. British English is useless here. I think the American slang, you know, to know what they were yeah. saying, and I didn't want to be, like, uncool, so I was like, yeah, I got mm. that, but I really didn't get it at first. Seriously, yeah. like, you're like, oh. It's yeah. new words. Like, it's like oh, a new way okay. of communicating. I seriously used to, like, search it up. And, 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 uh-huh. Like, or, and, 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 Google it. <laughs> and, yeah. Like, okay, this is what it means. Get prepared. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a TikTok star, Trishna Guru. Oh. So I, I love, I love her. So she said something that really stuck with me. She said, English is not a talent, it's a tool to it's communicate. Tool. And like, and that's so important to realize because sometimes your self-esteem gets fucked up because you're thinking you have to be able to pronounce a certain mm-hmm. way. And so it's, it's not a talent. Yeah. Being able to speak English yeah. is not yeah. so, like, it's just... Just communicate. As long as you get the point across. Yeah, it's, it's fine. We're pretty international here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And we speak more than one language. Like that's, that's you know. That's already so proud. good. You know, that's the talent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 That's the talent. Surprisingly, it wasn't hard. When I came here, and then I'm just laying down, like just sitting in my cousin's like shop. The lady walked in, she was like, do you, do you need a job? And I'm like, Oh yes, please. Mm. So then, for job, it wasn't really hard, to be honest. I think that's one of the great thing about America, that if you want to work, if you not earn, you go. And as for networking, definitely it was really hard. Like, about Nepal, my boy, when Nepal, and that's how you make friends, that's how you, you know, have mm-hmm. connections. But here, I felt that was a little different. If I, while making friends, only people I could relate to was Nepali. 
I'm sitting there like, oh, it's too bad. And I'm like, oh my god, yes, I get you. Mm-hmm. And then as for an American or like somebody foreign, it was really hard. I couldn't connect to whatever mm-hmm. they were trying to say or how their lifestyle is because it is different from mine. Mm-hmm. So I think there was this different, you know, broken connection ish thing mm-hmm. that really made mm-hmm. A little hard for mm-hmm. networking. It, it gets better as it, as time flies by. <laughs> yeah, right? that's what everybody has said, and I think yeah. it has been. Yeah. You know, now I feel a little confident. Yeah. I'm like mm-hmm. a little, you know, outgoing. I'm trying to feel things. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's getting better. Mm-hmm. For me, language was not what um, affected my networking or job opportunities. I think in 2007, 2008, it was like visa restrictions, racism, xenophobia. Yeah. Recession. Recession. The housing market and crash. And language barrier was on, <laughs> on, bottom. on the bottom. The bottom yeah. Not even a thing. Um, also, I think modern sector ma party. It's like humanities, social sciences. It's more difficult for foreigners, immigrants to get job. Um, I think how you speak, what you look like, did matter. It still does. I think that it's like change a little bit. That yeah, finding job was difficult as. Very difficult um, <laughs> because of other things. Um, to some extent, language. Thought of, in terms of friendships, I don't think it mattered at all. Especially because I was surrounded by so many other Nepali students, and I think we had each other's back. If one Nepali got a job, everybody yeah. else got a job. So we had our own networking going on, and I felt taken care of, and uh-huh. I never felt like I had to really struggle. Um, for a job. When I came into high school, I realized like you can pick whatever you want to do. If you mm-hmm. want to do sports, go for it. If you want to do theater, go for it. Drama, mm-hmm. like music, choir. Um, so most of the friends that I made were from these little groups, you know. Mm-hmm. So I did musical theater. Mm-hmm. I did like choir um, and other extracurricular activities like hockey, field hockey. Mm-hmm. Um, so as I was like experimenting my way around like all these, you know, social clubs. I just made friends through that. So I feel like I n- never had problems making friends. Also mostly because I was going to like theater, music, and they're all very open and accepting mm-hmm. and, yeah. and loving yeah, and true. gay, you know? I, I loved it, I enjoyed it. And as far as like getting jobs, because I came in high school and I knew that at some point, mm-hmm. by the time I'm 18, I was like, I want to be out. Like, mm-hmm. I want to be independent, like free. Freedom. So I literally did everything from, I did kids' par- birthday parties, like I did face painting, <laughs> like I put on Mickey Mouse costumes and like dance for them. This is like when I was 16 years old. I babysat, like mm. I nannied when I was like 16 and a half. Then I was like, okay, it's really easy to make money if you're down a hustle. Really? Mm, like sure. you know, like if you're mm. 16 years old and you're down a babysit, you're making 20 to 20 plus dollars an hour. Mm. I was like, okay, and then. I got a job at an ice cream shop. I've worked at hair salons, front mm. desk, personal assistant for an insurance company. I've done waitressing, host, um, mm. hostess at a restaurant. So I feel like if you're looking for a job, there's like so many places you can look for, especially like in high school, mm. you know? And like that's the beauty of America. You, you learn from doing jobs. You learn how to be in t- independent. Mm-hmm. Like I learned how to clean and wash dishes. I learned how to like talk to people, how mm-hmm. to seek people. You know, you learn all these like mm-hmm. amazing street skills, like life skills yeah. that you don't mm-hmm. learn from textbooks. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the things I actually loved about being here. When I was 18, I was like, I'm moving out because I wanted to be a musician. My family was not going to let that happen. <laughs> so I was like, I'm out. And by the time I was 18, I was good to go. I knew mm-hmm. how to do everything. I knew how to pay bills. I knew how to rent an apartment, like I knew how to get a job, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I feel like one of the biggest things, I wouldn't be the same person I, I am today if I didn't come here because mm-hmm. of all the random jobs that I did and I learned some life skills, yeah. you know? So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So many things, I think there's silence because we're like, <laughs> Where do we start? Yeah. Um, and like I said, I mean, it feels good to be able to walk on the street without being harassed. Yeah. Yeah. For starters, I will say it's not like which place is better or which is safer. It's just safety looks very different. It's like I can complain about how this country is not as safe for women as well. I can make arguments about that too. It's just that the the insecurity looks very different. I'm trying to be mindful about not vilifying Nepal. 
you know, does that make sense? Like a lot of times when you complain about the structural reasons why those problems arise, so it's so it's it's not fair to just say like you know Nepal you uh, everybody yeah, yeah like there, there's yeah, like a lot of layers why that happens. Um, but in those ways, in like very tangible, obvious ways, I do feel safer just walking around, wearing shorts, and like all those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being a woman is not hard. But the situation and your circumstances are, that's what's going to make things hard. For not just women, for everybody. So what, if you have to go, particularly for a, being a woman, definitely, I used to wear shorts, like, I used to wear like, oh my god, like, like, seriously, like, oh, like, oh, like, like, I don't, nobody does that here. I mean, in that way, I do feel safer here as well, right? I mean, like, if I'm wearing some clothes that will flash some of my body, I don't feel nothing here. But I think I would feel some type of way. I always had this, like, I always had this, like, I mean, I was little, I should I not wear this? Like, I don't want to do this because I'm going to get called for that. But I feeling say. I don't feel that here, which meaning that of course I feel safer, right? Being a woman isn't hard, but the situations make it mm. a little different from where you live. I don't like to sugarcoat things <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I want to say things for as they are. Like, sure, you know, we don't want to vilify the culture, but if you have to second guess, oh, like, I'm kind of hot right now, I'm gonna wear shorts. Like, mm. I don't think twice about it here, right? But the fact that you have to think like five times before you even make the decision to wear something that's comfortable for your own body mm -hmm. so that you don't get harassed. Yeah. I think that should be called out. You know what I'm saying? Like, And it's a big part of Nepali culture. Like, Women are oppressed, period. There's no arguing that. I know some cultures give women the rights and freedom and you know, it depends on where you are again. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it might be different in the city, it might be different in different cities, but I cannot recall a single day of my life in Nepal without being catcalled or without mm -hmm. being harassed, you know? Mm -hmm. um, obviously not all men do it, mm -hmm. but as far as my experience in life, I was experiencing it on the daily, mm -hmm. multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's important to, you know, speak about because yeah, like when I say that I was harassed every day, I'm not saying by every single Nepali person yeah. in the world, mm -hmm. but I'm speaking from my experience and I know that a lot of other women feel the same way that catcalling and harassment was a very big issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have been threatened for my life in mm -hmm. Nepal. I've been threatened to be attacked with acid in Nepal. And it's crazy to me that when I speak about this to Americans, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. do you want therapy? But in Nepal, it's like, oh dang, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, and you know, even your parents will be like, oh, you know what? Like, don't, don't go out looking like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you will be the one in the wrong instead of trying to change the world around you to say no. Like, it's wrong mm -hmm. to treat women like that. It's wrong to treat women's bodies like it's a sin. It's not okay to be born in the in a, in a, in a body and then be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. I feel like modesty is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. But to be ashamed of your body because society around you is saying like your your body is wrong. I, I think that's messed up. So. I think the, the biggest difference for me um, in Nepal and America is that obviously America isn't perfect. There mm -hmm. is oppression for women in, in the whole world. Patriarchy is a global problem. Mm -hmm. However, I feel like I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't come to America. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't have the amount of like the confidence or the, the freedom to express myself the way I do. I would be scared for my life if I was in Nepal, to be honest, you know. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to go through it to stories you hear in Nepal of like this happened to this woman. You know, this woman was attacked or this woman was like like an outcast or something. Like just hearing stories, you will feel like a lack of you'll feel like you're less of a human than a man in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Like how many times oh, you know, some of my friends they are scared to travel because their parents won't let them travel alone. Mm -hmm. I mean for good reasons, but that says a lot about what it's like there, you know, if you are a single woman and your parents won't let you travel alone, not because they don't love you, but because they're scared for your life, 
that's a problem. Yeah, like, <laughs> so yeah, I feel very strongly about this, but as, as a woman, I definitely feel safer here. Yeah, and I, I think the reason I don't want to generalize it, even though like I absolutely admit that there's that problem, is I think when, if you're sharing an experience like this and somebody says to you, no, Nepal is actually a safe place, that's gaslighting, right? That's like victim blaming, gaslighting, all of that. Similarly, when we say things like, oh, it's actually okay in America to walk, or it's like safe, you're gaslighting a lot of people who here go through that too. Yeah. You absolutely will be catcalled if you go to a lot of different places in America. It depends on where you are. You're like walking around downtown Boston wearing short, all the construction workers, you're gonna get catcalled, all that. So I think, I think my point is not to not speak the truth of what happens in Nepal, but to also leave a room for victims who are from, who, you know, have experience here to have their narratives just like leave a space for their narratives to exist as well that's why like personally speaking it has been much safer for me to be here than in nepal yeah. and i don't want to dismiss the fact that america is not a safe place for a lot of other women mm -hmm. who go through stuff if you talk about indigenous women being like harassed kidnapped raped all the like it, it doesn't feel yeah. right to say america is safe place yeah. when they're going through that yeah. you know so there's like personal experience mm -hmm. yeah. So we've only been talking about harassment and catcalling, you know, <laughs> so it, but right, like, you know, the question about what it's like to be a woman and the difference in the society, it's like so much more than being harassed, mm -hmm. so much more than not feeling safe. Mm -hmm. Just like even in the family, I feel like, so, well, for my experience, like I, I wanted to go study music and my family wasn't happy with that so I was like fuck that I'm leaving <laughs> I'm out it's eight I'm 18 I'm out and you know what I was able to do that mm -hmm. and like I was in uh, what you call it? I was an exile from my community mm -hmm. you know but I I know that in Nepal women don't have that kind of freedom mm -hmm. um, women are expected to be a good wife whatever that means. They're expected to be domestic. Mm. And I'm not talking about all families. I know it's not like that, but ma the majority uh, of, you know, the culture, like we have expectations on women that we don't have for men. Mm. And like, you have to be feminine, whatever that means. You have to be graceful. You have to learn how to do this and you have to be a good daughter-in-law. You have, you know, you have to, you have to be good at school you have to be successful, you have to work, and on top of that, you have you're expected to be domestic. Mm -hmm. And I think just that just that thought, just that culture, and it, it's been going on for so long, sometimes we find it so normal. Like I didn't question that until I came here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there are so many more things to talk about when we talk about the experience of being a woman in different countries. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I wanted to yeah. bring that up too, you know, because obviously your parents are not trying to treat you different because you're a girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I don't think they're wrong for it, you mm -hmm. know, but that's just how it's always that's been. how it's always been. So we don't second, we don't ask questions of, am I should should I be doing this? Should I be talking mm -hmm. to my daughter like this? Should like in schools they expect us to have ribbons and look like a clown and you know like <laughs> skirts below your calves yeah, and yeah. like. You know, like you, mm -hmm. you, 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 when you're when you're like 16 and you're wearing makeup in school, like you get sent home. It's mm -hmm. embarrassing. <laughs> you know, we don't talk. There's no sex education. Like I thought I was gonna die when I got my period. Like shit, like that. You know, there there needs to be more done for women because women go through a lot more than men do, in mm -hmm. in society. I feel like, in, in yeah, yeah. That's all. And I think that continues because I like definitely experience same things here with Nepalis, right? So just because a Nepali leaves Nepal and is like not everybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 they don't change overnight. You'll see like, you'll, you'll yeah. go to Nepali events and you'll see like guys there, like being guys and like you ask where their wives or girlfriends are, they're still in the kitchen prepping food while the guys are there playing cards or talking. Mm -hmm. Or you'll see like half of the time wives or girlfriends don't show up to She's events. calling them out, listen I'm up. Sorry, but, you know, <laughs> no, it's it true, happens. yeah. And so even like young people who are here, who've gone to college here and it, 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 it continues. Yeah. Not, like, it really does, like it, it brings all the way here. Like mm -hmm. the, it, it's definitely the mindset, like of thinking like, oh, my girlfriend needs to be home and do mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go out. Why can't it be like, okay, I'm gonna do this. You can go and do this. I'm gonna. Pay, you can pay the bills. I'm gonna go do breakfast. 
you know, like, why can't it be like that? Yeah. Why can't people mm-hmm. change the mindset of always saying that, okay, let's let my wife do this for my baby, yeah, mm-hmm. like, make my ch- child go to sleep. Yeah. Like, why can't you do that? And maybe her, her to watch TV or something, you know, like, so definitely let's change the mindset, not just, you know, always have the same concept, bringing it all the way here. Mm. I don't want this to come off as me trying to attack the culture. Yeah. You know, like, I don't have a problem with culture. Uh, but I feel like when, as an adult, you have experienced so many things in life, right? And then you know, okay, well, this was a great great experience and this wasn't. Yeah. This was good and this wasn't for me. Or this was good for my children, this wasn't. And then, like, you have this experience and then you have children and then you try to teach them better. Mm-hmm. You try to be like, okay, well, I did this in my life mm-hmm. and it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. So do things differently. And I think that's a, a very important thing to for, in, for evolution, yeah. for just growth and right. change. Yeah. But I feel like what culture does to us is that I feel like my grandma experienced oppression, right? Mm. In, in culture. I'm not saying she was oppressed, but just, you know, as a woman. Yeah. However, she will keep the trend going mm-hmm. and do the same to her... Yeah. Uh, her daughter-in-law yeah. or something and I feel like culture isn't bad but we must learn from our mistakes and change them when we yeah. see fit mm-hmm. right? when like, people are suffering if mm-hmm. someone's in pain or someone's not being treated right we got to be like that's not right mm-hmm. and change it and I think yeah. that's all we're yeah. trying to talk Definitely. about we have a great culture Nepalese culture is beautiful yeah. but everything needs change like mm-hmm. you know before you didn't have cars, you used to have like bull cart or something like that. Mm-hmm. It changed to cart because it's making your life easier, mm-hmm. and that's what the, the world wants. Like likewise, mm-hmm. like you know, culture is good. You're not you're not gonna try to change everything, never, because that's our culture. Mm-hmm. We need our authenticity. But if something is wrong, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Like if it's not fitting the community, it's not. What is if it's causing for? harm? Yeah. If like, it's causing pain and suffering. Exactly. Yeah. What? Why is the culture made for who people? And if it's affecting them, then why is it there? Mm-hmm. Let's change a little bit, twist yeah. it around, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Improvise. Oh, I have a good one. Whenever I see slippers, shoes turn around, I have to make it. See that game? I have to. That's a bad luck for me. I have to make mm-hmm. it like, oh, see that one on the I don't know if it's Nepali thing, but like majority of Nepali, I guess like I have to eat rice with no agari. Like <laughs> dinner on my dal bar, no? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm still hungry. Okay. I'll like go for that midnight snack if I've just had like pasta or something. Yeah. I-, I need that. And they got this for Yeah. I'm trying to think of what's the one Nepali thing I still do. Um, oh, you know, when my family calls me, I say doke. <laughs> I do that still, you know, or like you see relatives, namaste. Um, but yeah, like, do, you know, doke, yeah, I do that still. What about the head nods? Because people keep on telling me I do the, 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 the for everything. Like, it could be yes, it could be oh, no, it could be like, so the head nod. I, not really, another thing that I do is if I step a book, I have to look. Oh my god, please, I'm not. This is sin. Like, if I'm not, I still do that. Yeah. I don't know if I want to say this out loud, but I guess I will. You know, guide three mantra. If I ever get scared in my head, I'm saying the mantra. But <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one. We should have done that. <laughs> I know. <laughs>